So Sri Atma Siddhi Shastra 142 Gathas, Slopes, Verses. How many? 142 into how many sections? 12. There is a method in the matter, a careful construction in the whole composition. We saw, right, 12 sections, and we'll be seeing what a beautiful method and careful construction. Atma Siddhi Shastra is a journey well chartered. We can, we can see a definite course in it. Although it is written in one sitting, It's planned with utmost care of a seeker. Planned with? Care. Each verse, if you see, you will see. So, I read Atma Siddhi in this birth. In 19 end of 1984, end of 1984, and uh, not knowing Gujarati at all, the recitation we were doing every evening. Memorizing, I had done in 11 days. Yeah. I had taken a bada to finish it, um, you know, in a fortnight. And on the 11th day I was done. Someone actually inside was singing the whole thing. <laughs> but not understanding every word of it. So my first book was Self-Realization by Mr. J. L. Jaini. First English translation, 1923, pre-independence, 1923. So three, four lines in commentary at the end, that was my first encounter. Okay, whatever. So each verse, if you see, seamlessly meshing into the other. We can see a continuity, we can see a flow. That is the beauty of Sri Atma Siddhi. And beauty of Param Krupavati is writing. Every sentence has a connection with the previous sentence and the next sentence. Dhara, seamlessly meshing into one another. How does it benefit? Your thought grows and expands and becomes deeper with every verse. What you knew about the Guru till verse 10, when you go to verse 11, you will feel you know much more about Guru. What do you know about the duties of a shishya, a pupil, or student, or disciple? When you are at Gatha, a verse 15, you will feel you know much more when you are at 18. So that's the beauty. The thought grows, expands, until the reader gains complete clarity of that subject. But the Atma Nitya Che any hoy, ki moksh came thai any hoy. I'm complete, you will gain complete clarity. So it's so beautifully planned, it's very difficult to believe this is a product of one and a half or two hours. Ek bhel banavan hoy in Hebrews, you need 10 15 meetings. Nothing cooked also. Just, you know, compiling koto in this uh, 
compiling of mamra sev and little bit of puri and salt and all. And this is an original composition so beautifully planned for us. At least intellectually, at least, I want it spiritually only, but at least intellectually, you will feel yourself growing every month. With every yagna you will feel you are intellectually growing what you didn't in your years of schools and colleges. That way. And regarding spiritual science, spirituality. I would want you grow spiritually, but intellectually for sure. As Maulikji explained, 12 distinct sections made by Prabhu himself. All the titles are by him only. We are going to do it in nine yagnas, I'll be telling you how. But 12 sections, 12 distinct sections, and in each section, that aspect, whatever the name of the section is, is discussed elaborately. Every area of that aspect is covered. No more questions left for the seeker on his quest. No questions left. So, in this 142 verses and 12 sections, Param Krupaludev charts out a whole spiritual journey. With all the turbulence and triumphs, all the pitfalls and the pains, as Mulikji said in the last uh, Upsamhar conclusion, all the pitfalls which an aspirant might. All the serenity and reward if it is persisted properly, correctly. So if taken this journey as instructed, you will certainly emerge richer, finer, elevated. So now, the twelfth section. The first section is introduction. How many verses? Twenty-three. Starting from tomorrow. Twenty-three verses. Gujarati ma, it's called Upodghat. English ma, we can say introduction to the text. Nan Yagna of January. We have been doing. <laughs> Second section is from verses 24 to 33. Attributes or characteristics of an untrue seeker, bigot, fanatic, sectarian, Matarthina Lakshan. Okay? That will be doing in the Gnan Yagna of the month of February. Third section is from verses 34 to 42. Attributes or characteristics or signs of a true seeker. Atmarthina Lakshan. That also will be doing in February, Gnan Yagna. So, Matarthi and Atmarthi will be doing together. January, introduction. February, Matarthi and Atmarthi, Laksha. Then, section 4 is just two verses, 43 and 44. Naming of the six fundamentals or Introducing the subject matter of the text or introduction to the debate between the master and the disciple. Okay? So, two. This will be doing in the Gnan Yagna of March. Then, the fifth section, 
45 to 58 is the first soul exists. This again will be combining with the fourth. So fourth and fifth will be doing in the Gnan Yagna of March. The sixth one will be doing in April. The seventh and the eighth will be doing in May, Karta and Bhukta together, because it's just 8-8, um, eight, eight, so 16. Where are we? May. May, okay. So 9 and little bit of 10 will be doing in June. Completing the 10th in July. The 11th one, expression of disciples' enlightenment, the pupils' joy, the lessons learned, revised, and his joy and expression of gratitude. Aho, aho, Sri Sadhguru. So that will be doing in August. And the twelfth section, 128 to 142, 15 verses, the conclusion in September, because we have pollution in September from 3rd to 10th, September is pollution. So most probably I'll take the last section in pollution. But I thought I'm not committing anything. I don't know how this virus is going to mutate and how. I, I just don't know anything. So, apne to a journey jetli lambi chale itlo saruchhe na. Two ki thai to bhi saruchhe na, lambi thai to bhi saruchhe. So you don't need to think about it. Lambi thai to more satsangs you will get, and two ki thai to mukti jaldi tha se bhi So either you are getting the sukh, the happiness of liberation, or the happiness of satsang, which is same. So how beautifully it is chartered, the whole journey is so beautifully chartered and expressed in this. So a lot goes on the style of this text. Method, the plan is one thing and the style is another thing. Okay? So style or what or uh, Shaili of this scripture is also worth mentioning and Atma with Nemiji will tell us something about it. Sri Atma Siddhi Shastra <clears throat> has emerged from the inner wealth of Param Kripalu Dev's experience of the self. It can be easily memorized, written in a short yet simple and easy to understand style. It is his ultimate masterpiece. Since the beginning of the era of literature, the authors of spiritual texts have adopted a variety of linguistic presentations and narrative styles to enable people of different levels to easily comprehend the teachings and fulfill their desired goal. Amongst the exceptional and invaluable compositions, Sri Atma Siddhi Shastra, with its unique presentation style, cows a special niche for itself. Its composition is in a question-answer style, this style has several benefits. The author of the text can easily reveal the essence of the fundamentals to the reader through the question-answer style and can flexibly shape it according to his preferred method. The question and answer style raises curiosity in the reader's mind and this deliberation becomes an excellent means for the seeker to become focused. Through this style, the author not only presents his own viewpoint, but he can also present arguments of the opposite side and give logical answers to refute those arguments. Thus, the question-answer style being a significant method of presenting any subject matter, many authors of the past have also resorted to this conversational style. In Dwada Shangi, which are the 12 main Jain canons, an important position is occupied by the fifth ang, which is Sri Bhagwati Sutra. Composed in the question-answer style, it is a compilation of Sri Indrabhuti Gautam's 36,000 questions posed to Lord Mahavir Swami. Then there is Gnata Dharma Katha, Vipak Sutra, and many other such Jain canons are there, 
which has the exposition been done by Sri Sudharma Swami based on Sri Jambu Swami's question and the knowledge gained on that subject from Lord Mahavir. Many texts like Acharya Sri Jin Bhadraji's Vishesh Avashak Bhashya, Ganesh Sri Dev Chandraji's Vichar Ratnasur, etc. have resorted to the same style. The question answer style has also been used frequently in non-Jain text. In the Buddhist Tripitak, in several places, various dialogues have been written. Sri Vyas Muni in Srimad Bhagavad Gita has posed questions through Arjun and resolved them through Sri Krishna. In addition to various Upanishads, in text and poems written by Sri Shankaracharya, Kavi Akho, Dasi Jeevan Das, Kavi Darya Ram, etc., this conversational style has also been used. In Sri Atmasiddhi Shastra, Param Krupalu Dev has elucidated the discussion on the six fundamentals in a distinctive characteristic style of a dialogue between a guru and a disciple. To explain the six fundamentals of the, sto so of the soul to aspirants, Param Krupalu Dev presents the doubts regarding them one after another to the disciple and thereafter resolves them through the guru. Each question and answer is such that it can be helpful to progress on the spiritual path. Those who have such doubts can find solutions through them. Those in whom such deliberations and reflections may not have arisen, and hence similar types of questions also have not arisen, for them too, this dialogue between a guru and disciple written by Param Kruparu Dev can become an excellent doorway to spirituality. Param Kruparu Dev has woven the profound ascents of the fundamentals of the dispassionate Lord in Sri Atma Siddhi Shastra and has shown the true nature of the substances. He has established those fundamentals through scriptures, logic, and experience. His style of proving them is very penetrating, heart-touching, attractive, and impressive. He has beautifully used easy Gujarati language and simple couplets in meter doha chand in this text so that people who have ordinary knowledge of the language can also easily study it. The Atma Siddhi Shastra is a gist of spiritual sciences and all the religious philosophies of the Aryan culture, especially India. So if you say religious philosophies, there are many philosophies. It can be grouped into six categories called Shat Darshan. Shat Darshan, you'll get this word um, in 40. So all the different, different religious philosophy, you know what is philosophy, right? Philosophy literally means philo plus sophia, love for wisdom. Love for wisdom. And philosophy actually means a systematic study. So when I had to do PhD, I didn't know actually what was PhD. So I asked my guy, what does PhD stand for? <laughs> Doctorate of Philosophy. A systematic study in any field. But it has to be systematic study. <coughs> Logic, reasoning, experimentation, interviews, whatever. So all the religious philosophies, philosophy can be of any matter, but religious philosophies, different religious philosophies in India, all grouped into the six categories. So they are called Shat Darshan. Darshan means philosophy, six philosophies, six schools of thought, six ideologies. Six philosophies, six ideologies, six schools of thought. Okay? And it is called Shat Darshan. It forms the scholast, a, a, a part of scholastic curriculum in India. If you have to be a scholar, or if you are a scholar, you should be having the knowledge of all the six schools of thought. It is a part of the scholastic Vidwan. Vidwan Matre. Matre. And philosophy generally contains intricate terms and technalities. 
very, very, very complex. Jain, Buddhist, Sankhya, Nyaya, you know, very, very, the terminology is the technolo technologies, everything is very, very complex. Okay, I want to share something about me. So, um, traditionally, a person gets trained in this way. First, he attains the philosophical knowledge of his own religion. So, say, I was born in a Jain religion, so I have to study the Jain Siddhanta, Tattva, Sutra, etc. Before that, you can't go for anything else. Second, Adhyatma, now spirituality, the practical aspect. I'll repeat it again, write it that time. Huh? Then if you feel you want to pursue, then you go to languages, Sanskrit, etc. Prakrit, Pali, whichever. Then you want to pursue, you go to Shat Darshan, study of the six schools of thought. Then you want to go ahead, you go for logic, Nyaya. And then uh, maybe Jyotish, music, yoga, whatever. So I had gone exactly, I had done this way. So first was Siddhant, so almost, this was year 85 to 89. Siddhant Grantha, philosoph Jain philosophy, Jain principles rather. Adhyatma, spirituality. Language. So I did Sanskrit, then touch of Prakrit, touch of Kannada, touch of uh, Urdu, touch of Bengali, touch, uh, touch. I'm not good in any language. <laughs> because that focus only I could not get. Siddhanta, Adhyatma, Bhasha, language, linguistic. Pachi, Shat Darshan, so that was from 89 to 91. And then, Nyaya. So along with that, I did Nyaya also. Then came my MA, PhD, and then came the Ashram. So, not interested in all this Shat Darshan, and after hearing Narsi Mehta saying, Shuthayu Khat Darshan Sev Yathaki. What have you achieved? You have not, if you have not achieved self-realization, what have you achieved if you have parroted the whole sixth school of thought also? So after singing this with devotion, <laughs> Juna Gadna Narsi Metan, I'm, I'm listening to the Shrad of Narsi Metta right now. Amna Maru E Chalet. Bow Majavit. Bow Majavit. I don't want to start. If I finish in time, then I, I'll, I'll talk about Kevi Shraddha Metani and Juna Gadna. I give them a necklace and a Kevu Thaiche and a Bapna Shraddha Mate and a Pelo Twarka Dish and Shraddha Kevi Te Puru Kare. I would do some to them. Faith, faith. So, 14th century, you know, Narsi Metta of Juna Gadna. So, when he said, Shoot you, a puja karine, a shastro machine, a karine, we are not even focused on your goal. So I, Jaya Lagi Atma Tattva Chinyone, that one. So after reading this, Shoot you, Kata Darshan, Sevya Thaki, I go into Shat Darshan. <laughs> so those were my critical years, 89 to 91 and studying all the six thoughts in depth. Exam, passed all the exam, first class, topped, gold medal. <laughs> wait, wait, that is not what I want to say. <laughs> Whole uh, two years, I was actually grumbling. Philos, 
What is the meaning I said? Philosophy? Love for wisdom. But I was taking it as full loss. Gaan vali gyo mara dharma no. Full loss, I would say, because I could barely do my Agna Bhakti. I could not, you know, those two years, I don't know if I've sung any bhajan also. So much work to do. So I say, I'm at full loss with philosophy. <laughs> with philosophy, I'm at full loss. So I was grumbling for two years. And then one incident happened, Vijayabai knows and whatever. So, I'm not going into detail, but... Uh, and then I said, okay, now this will end, you know, 1991, September, which is the end of all my sufferings. <laughs> Studying and exams and all everything. And then started PhD, PhD started. That is not the way I had done Swadhyay my whole life. The study for a PhD thesis, you must be knowing, is very different. And again, I was sad for some time. And I said, yeah, philosophy, phil uh, Hindi mein philosophy bolte, right? So, philosophy se to sab garbad ho jane wali hai. Kuch nahi hua. I was filled with Sufi. <laughs> Sufi. Actually, with this journey, with Atma Siddhi, I became a Sufi. I didn't become a philosophy. I didn't become a philosopher. Instead, I became a Sufi. But that's because of His grace, of course. So, Shad Darshan, the gist of all the six schools of thought you will find presented in Sri Atma Siddhi Shastra. Imagine what you are going in. Six schools of thought. Are you one school? You are going to get Right? And now you are going to get a touch of Vedanta, Sankhya, Buddhist, Charvak, everything. So, gist of the six schools of thought, only brainies can go into it. Not laymen like us. But Sri Atma Siddhi is so wonderfully crafted and presented <laughs> that you are going to have a gist of all the philosophies and still very easy to understand. As a layman, I'm saying, not as a scholar also. As a layman, very easy to understand. Such a way everyone can gain something. Whatever is worthy of, of course, whatever his capacity, but everyone will gain from it. A sectarian will also gain from it. A scholar will also gain from it. Uh, uh, a child will also gain. An aged will also gain. An experienced Vemar Kushal will also gain. So it's beautiful. And such a serious subject to be presented in a poetic form. After the Buddhist philosophy, after the Buddhist philosophy, two lines. You, know, you can't expect a poetry on the philosophy. So such a serious, let me use the word serious, subject, six or four, you know, six fundamentals, complex giant philosophy. Jain philosophy is very complex because it sees the same substance from multiple viewpoints. So it becomes complex. Now some two other nai came in the last Shibir. Evam bhut nai. Nai gam nai. So imagine studying a substance from multiple viewpoints. Obviously it's going to be complex. I'm not saying it is wrong, it is true, it is beautiful, it's beneficial, everything, but complex. And to present such a complex thing in a poetic, and I'm going to prove it romantic also. Form. Literary genius, obviously. He simplifies. He demystifies the complex Jain philosophy 
And you know how, as Nemiji said, through a lively exchange of ideas between an enlightened master and a true disciple. Vato, vato. Just exchanging ideas, you won't even realize that this was satsang. You understand what I mean? Sometimes it's just a lively exchange of ideas. Papa, what do you think about this? And then Papa says what he thinks about it. And it's just a lively exchange and suddenly you realize, I'm elevated. I'm experiencing clarity. No confusion, no delusion left. So, this satsang, in this style, he has presented the six schools of thought, or the gist of the six schools of thought, or the gist of the six fundamental truths of the soul, according to Jainism. So beautiful. Dialogue, dialogue question-answer style, I agree, but I would say lively exchange of ideas. I can explain death without explain without believing in the existence of soul. It is Ajay. How much? How much? I would not say you have argued, but how much? Ajay to I'm very badly he has argued with me. Hitesh Bhai was quite good, but uh, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, so then Udaipur, Lakshmi Vilas Palace. Yeah, check in it. Asta Ashnanu naming ceremony was there in Ranakpur. So we had to go through Udaipur. When were you born? Can't say, could be check in No, no, I don't want to give a birthday present. When? 90? 93. So 93, you had come. Either my naam karan ka jitu e loko then we had gone to Ranakpur, Vaya Udaipur, and this fellow being the kaka came. And the kaka said, but death na manwa matu, we don't need to believe that the soul leaves the body and all. Right? Tamane yathe, mane yathe. So, you know, you are saying that this is the way I believe, according to science, heart stops or brain stops or something, the gani gani theories you had said, and there is, you just don't need to believe that the soul leaves the body and all. Ambi dekhat tata nati tame. Biju koi anubhav nahi, no other proofs. And you just want to thasa a theory in us. And then we start thinking that way. Don't laugh, I'm going to prove it. <laughs> so, and there was a lively exchange, right? Manak barabbar yaad se, Room ni barik nanuk du garden atu table table atu betan khursi ati pella tina bi betheri pache anu pingan vadare chai du to she left and till two three in the night and morning we had to leave for Ranakpur and you know puja na time me pocho anu to and but it was a lively exchange it was nothing like a lecture on the existence of soul. Blackboard of her. That was the way our professors used to do. So it was serious at Banavi Nathi Atma Siddhine. So again and again I am using the word lively exchange of views, ideas, opinion between an enlightened master and a true seeker or a true disciple. So, while PKAD, Param Kuparude, Srimad Raj Chandraji, because I'll be using all three words. While Prabhu has planned each and every verse so beautifully, you know, each meshing into the other, that way, a continuity of flow, still every verse you'll realize is compact and condensed with meaning. Ekaj gatha ne judi judi rite, ar ekaj gatha ne samjhau ta thuns nikli jai, ekaj verse, because it's compact and condensed in meaning. And when it is so, it needs 
explanation. Vivechan. When it is so compact. See, you have been hearing, you know, lectures and all of so many people. Sometimes some people speak for one hour and you just write two lines. So he's repeating the same thing again in different words. There is no substantial thing, nothing, no logic, no new example, no nothing. So, tamari diary ma koi, sometimes I call some guest and you have been writing and in t just two, three lines, my, the whole lecture is over. But when it's compact and condensed, you know, pages and pages, lakho to bhi ke so much is left out. So this is the beauty of Sri Atma Siddhi Shastra. But when it is like this, for vast sections of readers of Sri Atma Siddhi Shastra, you need explanation to reach the essence of the verse. So a lot of explanations and translations in different languages has happened from 1896. The text was composed in 1896 and this is 2021. 20, so 125 years, a lot of vivechan and lot of translations have been done. Apurvavji will give us a, um, explain the whole thing in a tabular form. Explanations and translations of Sri Atmasiddhi Shastra. As we saw yesterday, Param Krupal Dev gave Sri Atmasiddhi Shastra to only a select few and the text was not published during his lifetime. After he left his mortar coil, his younger brother, Sri Mansukh Bhai Rauji Bhai Mehta, wished to publish all his literature and sought the help of Sri Ambalal Bhai for his research work. The collected literary works of Param Krupal Dev were published in Vikram Samvat 1961. As a book, Sri Madhrachandra, and at the time, Sri Atma Siddhi Shastra was given a place in that book. Thus, Sri Atma Siddhi Shastra was published for the first time approximately nine years after its composition. After that, in Vikram Samad 1964, Sri Mansukh Bhai had Sri Atma Siddhi Shastra printed as a separate book, which was the first time it was published independently. 1908 AD, it was published for the first time as an independent book. It is the good fortune of aspirants that Param Krupal Dev has explained certain verses in some of his letters. They have become immensely helpful in understanding the deeper meaning of those verses. The one who was a witness to the creation of Sri Atma Siddhi Shastra, Sri Ambalal Bhai, wrote the concise meaning of every verse of Sri Atma Siddhi Shastra during Param Krupal Dev's lifetime. Param Krupal Dev had seen the explanation and therefore these meanings are respected as if they are Param Krupal Dev's meanings. Sri Maneklal Bhai Ghela Bhai Javeri, who had also been blessed to receive a copy of Sri Atma Siddhi Shastra, also wrote the meanings of Sri Atma Siddhi Shastra during Param Krupal Dev's lifetime. References to, references to this are made in Sri Maneklal Bhai's letters to Sri Ambalal Bhai and in Sri Ambalal Bhai's letters to Param Krupal Dev. After Param Krupal Dev left his mortar body. Many books have been published by different authors explaining it. We will see the two classifications of the explanations. The two classifications, classifications are detailed explanations and short explanations. Let's, le let's have a look at the screen. Detailed explanations. First detailed explanation was published in 1943 AD. It was a publication of Sri Kanji Swami's Pravachans, 1961 by Sri Bhogilal G. Sheth, in 1986 by Dr. Tarulata Bhai Mahasati Ji, in 1992 by Dr. Bhagwan Das Mehta, in 2001, Atma Siddhi Shastra Vivechan by Pujya Gurudev Shri. Four volumes of 3,000 pages. <laughs> 2009 by Sri Jenti Lalji Mara Sahib. 2011 by Sri Bhanu Vijayji Mara Sahib. 
So from this detailed explanations table, we can see so many sadhu sadhvis have given discourses and written books on Sri Atma Siddhi Shastra. Now let's turn to Sri Atma Siddhi Shastra short explanations. First is in 1905, as we heard by Sri Ambalal Bhai. Then 1923 by Rao Badaur, Sri J.L. Jaini, the book which Sahib Ji mentioned just right now. Then 1943, Brahmachari Ji, Sri Grovadhan Das Ji. 90, 1965, meanings were published by Sri Digambar Jain Swadhyay Mandir Trust, Songhat. 1976, Sri Daya Bhai, C. Mehta. 1985, by Sri Dinubhai Patel, 1993, Sri Girdhar Bhai, 1993, Sri Dhirajlal Dayabhai Mehta, whom we know as Dhirubhai Pandit, 2003, Sri Manubhai Doshi, 2005, Sri Satish Sharma, 2006, Sri Chandrika Ben, 2006, Shri Pravin Kumar Khimji Tejukaya Alpashrut, 2008, Pandit Fulchan Shastri, 2010, Srimad Rachandra Pranit Atma Siddhi Shastra, Sankshiptat, short explanations by Pujya Gurudev Shri. In 2015, short explanation was published by Shri Raj Sobhag Satsang Mandal Saila, 2019 by Benshi Ratna Prabhu. Publications by Sri Anandilal Ji Mehta, Dr. Bola Shankar Vyas and Trikamlal Shah, and Mugat Bhagwan Das Shah. The publications are not available. And as we saw, Sri Maneklal Ghelabai Javeri had also written meanings, but they have not been found. Mahatma Gandhi Ji also had written on Sri Atma Siddhi Shastra in English, but it was left behind in a bus in London. The table, the, these tables show that so many distinguished people have explained Sri Atma Siddhi Shastra. <laughs> Around 30 explanations, 30 books, plus numerous chapters, plus numerous articles on Sri Atma Siddhi Shastra. And not only that, inspired by its importance, usefulness, and popularity, many have also translated it. These translations are as follows. The first translation of Sri Atma Siddhi Shastra was in 1919 in Sanskrit by Pandit Bechar Das Ji. We have heard about Sanskrit scriptures being translated into Gujarati. Here we are seeing Guj a Gujarati scripture translated into Sanskrit. Then in 1927, in Marathi, by Sri Agnath, the translator has remained anonymous. Then in 1967, in English, by Father Francis. A Christian father, not from India, still so impressed by Sri Atma Siddhi Shastra that he translated it into English. <laughs> Sahib Ji has taken a discourse on Father Francis's uh, expression on Sri Atma Siddhi Shastra. In 1974, in Hindi, by Sri Sajanangan Ji of Hampi Ashram. In 1985, in English, Brahmachari Ji, Sri Govardhan Das Ji. This was published in 1985, but it was written about 40 years back, before it was published. So say around, before 1945 it was written, uh, translated into English. Then in 1996, in Hindi, by Mahopadhyay, Sri Chandra Prabha Sagar Ji. In 1996, in Bengali, by Sri Bhavarlal Nata. In 2001, in Kannada, by Dr. A. N. Upadhyay and Dr. M. A. Jaychandra. In 2006, in English, by Sri Chandrika Ben. In 2006, 
in Hindi by Shri Nijawan in 2019 in Hindi by Ben Shri Ratna Prabhu. The year of publication of Hindi translation by Shri Anandilalji Mehta is not available. And there is a, another Marathi translation by Srimati Padmabai Bedekar, which has not been published. Sahibji has a copy of it. <laughs> Thus, right now, Sri Atma Siddhi Shastra is available in seven languages, Gujarati and Sanskrit, Marathi, English, Hindi, Bengali and Kannad. These explanations and soon and soon French and uh, uh, Spanish, German, Arabic, Mandarin, Mandarin. Thus, these explanations and translations show the profoundness, glory, and universal appeal of Sri Atma Siddhi Shastra.